Ronald Reagan. No, I haven't lost my mind. Uh, this is President's Week. According to this new Gallup poll this week, 19% of respondents chose Reagan as our nation's, one, no, nation's number one chief executive. The former B-movie star even beat out Abraham Lincoln, the guy who freed the slaves and saved our union during America's darkest days. What's so impressive about Reagan's resume to earn, is, to earn such a distinction as the American president, what could it be? Well, let's take a look. On tax policy, for some reason, we think of Reagan as the great tax cutter. Nothing could be farther from the truth. If he didn't make more than a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, Reagan wasn't a tax cutter at all. He was a tax raiser. He raised taxes seven out of his eight years in the White House, and in total raised taxes 11 different times. In 1982, Reagan passed the largest peacetime tax increase in the history of our nation. That's in the history of our nation, the largest tax increase. In 1986, Ronald Reagan became the first president in history, in history, to cut taxes for the super rich and raise taxes on working families at the same time. He was essentially the sheriff of Nottingham, taking money from the poor to give to the super rich. So let's add Sheriff Nottingham, a habitual tax raiser, to his resume. What's next? The Tea Party today has vaulted Ronald Reagan up to be an American demigod. And what's their main party platform? The national debt. So let's see how Ronald Reagan addressed our nation's debt. When Reagan moved into the White House in 1980, and he inherited a $930 billion national debt. When he left office in 88, our national debt was nearly $3 trillion. Let me repeat that. He inherited a debt of under a trillion and turned it into a debt of nearly $3 trillion. He added three times more debt to the country than all of the presidents of the 21st century combined. He borrowed more money than every president from George Washington to Jimmy Carter combined. And anybody who wants to tell you how the economy improved and things got better after Reagan's union busting and tax cuts for the rich, here's a simple reply. You give me a credit card with $2 trillion on it that my grandchildren will have to pay off, but I don't spend much of anything on, and let me spend that money around on lavish and idiotic projects like Star Wars, and I'll show you what it looks like to live large. Republicans attack Obama for borrow and spend stimulus. Reagan was the ultimate borrower and spender, the largest in the history of the United States of America until George W. Bush came along and borrowed and spent nearly twice as much in the process of resurrecting Reaganomics. So let's add that to Reagan's resume. America's greatest debtor and squanderer of our wealth. Let's see, who is America's so-called greatest enemy today? Did you say Osama bin Laden? Well, Ronald Reagan helped create him. In order to fight a proxy war against the Soviet Union, Reagan spent billions of dollars training and arming Islamic fundamentalists in the mountains of Afghanistan. Once the Soviets left the country, Reagan allowed those same Islamic fundamentalists to take control of the Afghan parliament, giving the Taliban and Osama bin Laden power that they would one day use to attack America. So let's add terrorist enabler to his resume. Oh, and for those of you who said that America's greatest enemy has not bin Laden, but instead Iran, guess what? He illegally gave weapons to Iran, too. Just look at the Iran-Contra affair. So let's add illegal arms dealer to his resume. Then in 1982, Ronald Reagan signed a bill that gave amnesty. That's right, amnesty. The whole thing, the whole enchilada. Amnesty to three million illegal immigrants in the United States. I think every Republican in the state of Arizona's head just exploded as I said that. But it's true. So if you want to blame anyone for the huge number of illegal immigrants who thought, hey, more opportunity by coming to this country, just look to Ronald Reagan, America's greatest president. So let's add illegal immigrant coyote to his resume, too. Now, what do we get? Well, let's see, habitual tax raiser, uh, added nearly three million to the national debt, terrorist enabler, uh, president who helped our enemies, a president who illegally, illegally smuggled weapons to a hostile government in Iran, and a president who exploded our nation's immigration problem. Why is he the great, greatest president then? Ronald Reagan wasn't even all that popular back when he was president. His average approval rating was about 52%. That ranks him below his successor, one-term president George H.W. Bush. He only had a 32% approval rating in 1982 when the country was mired in an economic downturn with an unemployment rate of over 10%. And after the Iran-Contra scandal, 
one third of the country wanted to see Reagan kicked out of office. So once again, why is he considered America's greatest president? One word, money. After Ronald Reagan left office, the 1% of the country that actually benefited from his policies, the super rich millionaires and billionaires, embarked on a massive rewriting history campaign, rewriting history campaign, excuse me, to make sure those very same policies would be preserved by future presidents. And since then, billions have been used to rename roads, landmarks, airports, and government buildings after Ronald Reagan. Check out Grover Norquist's Ronald Reagan Legacy Project which was spun out of the right-wing organization Americans for Tax Reform that aims to keep taxes for America's millionaires and billionaires super low. The goal of the Ronald Reagan Legacy Project is to have at least one notable landmark in every one of our nation's 3,067 counties named after America's 40th president. That way, for people who weren't even alive or don't remember the Reagan presidency, they can just assume he must have been one of our greatest presidents because all the stuff that's named after him, sort of like George Washington, right? And guess who sits on the Ronald Reagan Legacy Project's advisory board? Only some of most America's most notorious conservatives, like Karl Rove, Newt Gingrich, Jim DeMint, Rick Santorum, Jim Bunning, and Ohio's Governor John Kasich, the guy who's trying to bust up unions in Ohio just like Scott Walker is in Wisconsin, and all funded directly or indirectly by billionaires and their foundations. So what here we have here is a concerted effort by billionaires and their wholly owned top GOP operatives to rewrite history and elevate Ronald Reagan's presidency. And sadly, it's working. Our nation's history of great presidents from George Washington to Thomas Jefferson, to Abraham Lincoln, to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, to John F. Kennedy, all of them overshadowed by one man who tragically began the destruction of America's middle class and dismantled America's greatness, Ronald Reagan. It's time we let the man's resume speak for itself. Reagan wasn't the greatest gift to America. He was just the greatest gift to America's billionaires. And they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars to keep you from knowing that. Happy President's Day. And that's the big picture for today. Don't forget, democracy begins when you get active. Tag, you're it. We'll see you tomorrow.